What's the difference between software and video games? We're gonna talk about that and why it matters coming up. What's going on guys? My name is Tim Roswick from Game Dev Underground. And today we're gonna talk about the difference between software and games. Now, you might be thinking, why is this important? Why do I care? What's the difference? Well, software has very different design philosophies from video games. And the thing about that is that software and games are usually made with some of the same technologies, right? Programming can carry over to making actual desktop software or you can make games with it. Uh, web technologies, you can make websites with it or you can make web applications and all that kind of stuff or you can make HTML5 games. You make cool stuff like that. So I've seen a lot of people a lot of people in a programming industry or in the art industry or whatever they have this skill set and they're used to working on things and they move over to game development and they find it very difficult because the design aspects of a game is very different than the design aspects of a piece of software and we're going to talk about a couple of the key differences that i've found because i've done both and i've struggled with this issue personally um, I started out in game development, but then I moved to software and I it was a big mess for me trying to figure out all these different pieces of how to design a good piece of software and all this stuff didn't make sense. And ultimately my my experience in both really benefited me. Um, it my understanding of games really helped me do a lot of consulting and build a lot of really cool technologies uh, with gamific gamification and understanding how um, users think about things, but then the software end also gave me a lot of life lessons and a lot of cool stuff that I learned uh, to kind of complete my projects and game development stuff. It's a lot of stuff that I share here. Um, a lot of stuff I share on the channel can be software or game development advice and pieces of info, but uh, there are three primary key differences, I think, between software and uh, games. And so I'll start with the first one which I think software removes obstacles from people's lives. Games add them. So here's what I mean by that. If I'm building a piece of software to help you with your accounting or whatever, that software has to make your life easier for, for doing accounting or doing whatever you're doing. If it doesn't, you wouldn't use the software. It wouldn't make sense. You just use a Excel spreadsheet or whatever. Um, games are different. The whole point of a game is to add an obstacle to the player, is to prevent them from going places. So for example, um, a so in software design philosophy, one of the key things is you want to make sure that any action the user needs to do is immediately understandable and accessible. You want to make things easy to do as possible so that the user can get what they're trying to do done. The software should not be in the way at any point in time of what you're trying to do. But a game is all about obstacles. That's all the game is, it's just a giant mess of obstacles. You wanna make things hard for the player, you wanna make things complicated, you wanna make things challenging. Otherwise it's no fun. Like if it's a game that's super easy and like, think of a tap game where all you do is just tap. Like it doesn't make any sense. Those, those games don't, I mean, you have to add obstacles to make a game challenging and the game has to be somewhat challenging to be fun. So that's I think a big key difference between software and game development and a lot of software developers struggle with this when they move to game design because the philosophy is so different and it can be really like challenging to understand that. So that's the first thing. Second thing is very similar but I think software reduces time and games add to it. Like. The difference between Microsoft Word and um, Super Meat Boy, like, like they're both applications, right? They're both written with a purpose, but one of them is designed to save time. The other one is designed to waste time, in a sense. Um, and so I think in that sense, outside of just obstacles, right? Like time is something that we take humans look at it a little bit differently than I think any other species does. And because we live in such a productivity obsessed world, we're always trying to save time at the things that we don't want to do, right? Like work is usually one of those things, especially in American culture. Like we, 
we want to save time at work. We want to be more productive. We want to get more shit done. When it comes to games, games are actually advertised as being X amount of hours long, or this this game does this, or this has replayabil replayability value, or whatever. Like it's actually a marketing benefit to advertise your game that it's it's super long, or it's 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 got a lot of content, or whatever. And that's one of the things we value in games and we don't value in software. We want software to eliminate uh, some of the time that we spend on stuff and we want games to add to it because it's entertainment value. Um, so I think that's really, really, really important to understand. Uh, and it changes the way that you kind of design, right? Because I think in, in software where you would make something designed to take the least amount of clicks, to least amount of menus, to make rapidly used actions right up front uh, as far as user experience so they can just click the button and get what they want to do done. Games, you, you actually want to take a lot of time and, and do that. Like, we think of a level progression system. Um, like, let's say you can only equip a certain weapon at level 40, right? In, in a game. As far as software, that doesn't make any sense at all. Like, if someone wants to use a piece of like a modification to a piece of software, they want to use a different theme or whatever, disabling that ability to them is just doesn't make any sense to the user. But from a game standpoint, the sense of progression, that, that extra barrier, those extra things in between uh, the player and where they want to get to really helps the immersion in the game. It really helps make a great game. And it's a really important concept, right? Like you got to understand that f coming from software, going to game design, yes, you're using the same technologies, but the design philosophies are so much different between the two. Um, so I think that's really important. I know I said three things, but I guess those are the two primary things that I wanted to talk about. Um, but I think if there are other things out there, I know there are, uh, share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let's start a discussion about this because... This is something that comes up a lot in game development. I see a lot of people that have experience in software and they want to make games and they ask questions that are that show this, that show that they have the software technical experience but they don't have the game design philosophies. I've got a lot of requests for uh, game design theory and that kind of thing too because of this. So if you've got any thoughts on it, please leave the comments below. Let's get the comments popping because I would love to start a discussion about this and hear what you guys have to say. Uh, but anyways, once again, I'm Tim Ruswick, and I will see you guys next time.